Hey, my name is Christina Abritzeze. As a student of international business with a focus on social media and marketing, I was looking to learn more about the use of data and analytics to improve a business. I wanted my learning to be practical, collaborative, and with easy to learn tools. After discovering Passpot.com and its mission to empower people with data fluency skills, I jumped on board and signed up for the Passpot Coffee Project Challenge. The choice of coffee project was perfect because as a barista working at Yachty's Cafe in Wollongong, Australia, I'm always looking for new ideas to provide my customers with the perfect shot of espresso. Plus, Yachty's business owner, Shane, loves it when we use analytics to make a faster and better quality brewing process. Passpot made it easy for me to learn online and run analytics on my mobile at Yachty's or at home. And because it's integrated with Slack, I even had a collaboration space with a coach and three other professionals from around the globe who also worked on their coffee project at the same time. I first learned about quality management and the approaches used by Toyota and Motorola. This is known as Lean and Six Sigma and the blended five phase approach to solve business problems, the DMAIC roadmap. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. In the Define week, we looked at the coffee process at Yachty's. We have an espresso machine and we have always run it the same way. But we haven't looked at the settings for a very long time and not from a scientific approach anyway. This is definitely a continuous improvement project and we are looking for a better understanding of how the process works so that we can implement new strategies to improve our process overall. In the measure week, unlike blindly preparing a shot of espresso without truly understanding the value behind proper measurements, we start by checking the variation of the instruments. We use my phone to measure time, and then we use myself and the judgment of my coworker to judge for taste. This was fun because I was able to work with my housemate to set up random walking intervals for me to measure on my phone, and 20 drinks for me to blind test and confirm that I can repeat a decision of good or bad taste within a standard figure of merit. Then we use two process mapping techniques. The first was SIPOC, which is a table of process steps key inputs and outputs so that we can see how things are actually done and what's needed to make the magic happen. Next, with a block chart of the value stream, I was able to visualize and assess the workflow process in terms of time. Here, I gathered 13 time interval measurements of the main process steps of brewing in a standard full cream milk espresso beverage from the bean to the palate. From that, we saw that the longest time it takes me to serve coffee is 156 seconds, and the quickest time was 55 seconds. That much variation was a big surprise, because we didn't think that way until now. I can now see that dirty milk jugs are increasing my froth time because of the moments when I needed to clean them quickly in the sink. This is a distraction from getting coffee to my customers quickly. In the analyze phase, I can then make a quick hit right away using the lean organizing principles of 5S. Sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. I remembered my father once told me that everything has a home. So we created one for spare milk jugs right by the frothing station so that we can keep flowing on the coffee stream without any interruptions. The night shift now takes care of cleaning and replacing the jugs for the morning crew. Using Passpot on my phone, I was able to t-test in three seconds the average differences before and after the quick hit. And here I saw there was a 56% improvement in the frothing time. I took the SIPOC chart and created a knowledge bank to show cause and effects relationships on the coffee grind step to the coffee taste. After some design experiments around milk type, it became clear that this factor was very personal and subjective to the consumer as far as taste goes. And since milk is self-selected when somebody orders, it's best managed as a customization factor. So next I turn to the settings of the coffee machine. The Yachty's espresso machine has some fixed settings like the amount of water and others that are hard to control like the pressing of the powder. So I turn to the coffee grind, which is a good controlled variable, which are randomly sampled at four different levels of coarseness. Amazingly, the proportion of good taste showed a perfect chevron pattern of highest taste and lowest brew time, with a falloff that is steep and linear, verified with regression. 
Having found and confirmed our preferred setting, we made sure that everyone knew the result. To help everyone see it, we put a visual marker on it so that we can always return it to the magic point if it is ever changed for some reason. Now this was a fun project. What I learned was that the ideal espresso drink will have a grind amount of 9.2 on my machine and a drip time between 20 and 30 seconds. Throughout this process of trial and error, I was able to discover how to make quick fixes and improve efficiency with the cafe and data. I am more confident about collecting and analyzing data to make great business insights. Thank you Passplot for the guidance and support through my journey. I love the phone app integration and a special thank you to Yachty's Cafe in Wollongong, Australia for helping us to discover how to make the best tasting espresso possible. My name is Christina Abitzeza and thank you for listening to me.